Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Mitch. Mitch Nelson, as they say. So, um, I've been having a, I like to call myself a wanderer, I say. And I've been wandering truly and excitedly and having a great time for the past year. And one of the things with being a wanderer is I've gotten to introduce myself again and again and again, again. So when I was a kid, it was kind of fun because you're young and new. And, but one of the things I realized at first was uh, that phrase, uh, don't judge a book by its cover. And I would notice people that would judge me almost immediately. And they would always be surprised um, when I said something intelligent or something interesting. Because, <laughs> you know, I just don't know if I always come off cover-wise like a intelligent, fun guy. And so I would say, I would always be whistling, because I figured music, you know, you can't just walk down the road whistling a classical music tune without having knowing something. And so, and there were other little things that I would do, and that's one of the reasons I fell into um, comedy, was because I would always be making little jokes about myself. For instance, my nephews all like the fact that I look like a T-Rex when I walk around and move around. <laughs> one of those Tyrannosaurus Rex dinosaurs, and so, um, but that's a, you know, and, and so that's kind of one of the ways uh, I've discovered uh, stand-up comedy, and that's one of the things I'll introduce myself as, uh, is, you know, hey, this is a T-Rex. And they like it. It makes them laugh. And, uh, but, uh, yeah. So, but it reminded me uh, this year of growing up as a kid, all the little tricks and the little things that, that happened uh, when I would meet people. And so I thought I'd tell you a few of those tonight. One of the fun ones was uh, actually one of my cousins who was uh, quite a few years younger than me at the time. I think he was five or six. Um, we op I opened the door when he came for a visit one time and he just started laughing, just laughing hard. And he goes, hey mom, look what Mitch can do with his hands. <laughs> and so I thought it was the best trick ever. And uh, then like maybe a couple hours later he goes, okay, Mitch, you can stop doing that now. It's not <laughs> funny anymore. <laughs> so I got to tell him, you know, no, I'm born this way. It's going to stay that way. And another time I had a friend uh, who knew the kids in a congregation. And so, and, and as I moved into that area, as I moved in and went to church for the first time with my friend, um, I could feel everybody, all the little kids, the normal, I could feel the normal stares. And my friend did not know how to deal with that. It, it just hadn't ever occurred to him that that would even happen. And uh, so I wandered off to the bathroom after the services, and all the kids were friends with him at the time. And so they came up and they were like, Mike, Mike, what's, is that your new friend? And he's like, yeah, that's Mitch. And he's, they're like, wow, cool, what's, what's wrong with his hands? And he goes, nothing, why? And the one little kid opens his jaw really wide and he goes, haven't you noticed? <laughs> so, that was, uh, that was the friend that I'm telling this longer story about as well. He was kind of a, he was like that. He was good with the friend, he was good with people. He was a great guy and, uh, and he could see the concern and he could feel the concern in himself about the whole staring thing and he, uh, he and I, uh, started noticing the staring and we would call it gawking and so he would point at somebody and go they're gawking at you and we would just laugh at them to ourselves you know they wouldn't really know but it, it helped me realize hey they're they are doing something a little different than you know it didn't bother me so but uh, he did know this uh, this really nice older lady named Edna and she lived at home alone and uh, her children were long gone, but uh, had played uh, the piano growing up. And so she had this old piano in her house that never got played anymore. And Mike knew this, and so uh, when he came, and when he, when he and I went to her house, to, and, and I was being introduced to her for the first time, we would sit and chat for a while, and then he got his goofy 19-year-old bratty expression on his face, and he said, hey, Mitch, do you want to play a song for her? And she got this look on her face of just horror because she felt so bad 
for him offering something that she thought I was going, you know, she thought he was just completely making fun of me. And uh, she was, yeah. And so I kind of knew, I kind of saw what was going on, but I wasn't really aware of the whole picture until later. And, but I just said, um, <laughs> sure, is that okay, Edna? Can I do that? And she goes, oh, sure, nobody plays that piano anymore. I don't know how good it is, but. And so I did this, I wandered over to the piano. said very nice things to me as your applause did. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, and that was it. I wandered off and it was a great, uh, you know, it, start, it was the start of a great friendship. She actually was one of my favorite friends from living in that place and we stayed in touch. And um, one, of the, one of the cool things I got to do after that was uh, come and introduce another friend to her. And uh, he asked, you know, how we, how we met and how she and I had met. And I got to hear this story back from her. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, that Mike, <laughs> when he started talking about could you go play a song, he, she said, I thought he was so sarcastic and he played it so well as a joke that I didn't even realize what was about to happen. And she said, it was like serendipity. And I, my heart melted when she said serendipity. And it's now one of my favorite words and the name of the story. Thank you. Aww.